Well, with global coronavirus cases on the rise, is it the right time for Japan or any country to be urging people to travel? Well, let's talk more about that with travel expert Onika Raymond, the host of Travel Channel's Big City Little Budget and One Bag and You're Out. Thank you for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. So we've seen it's been a week since Japan launched its Go to Travel campaign. What do we know regarding how many people took advantage of it and how travelers feel about it? Well, you know, the Go to Travel campaign is a 1.35 trillion yen campaign that was originally designed to promote domestic travel by Japanese residents to any destinations they chose within the country with up to 50% discount. Now, it's unclear as to how many people have taken advantage of this particular uh, offering within the last 10 days or so. But what is very clear is that it is a controversial topic because one of the things you have to understand is that with the government trying to balance economic interests, they may be compromising health. And the tourism industry contributes, the tourism industry in Japan contributes about 10% to uh, the country's GDP, but domestic travel of that 10% is about 80%. So definitely the government has interest there. Um, but is it safe? That's the controversy. Indeed, because we have seen that Japan started reporting record numbers of new cases per day at the same time that a campaign was getting underway. Today they reported a 1,200 rise in 1,200 cases. Is this just a coincidence, or can you really chalk that up to this rise in domestic travel? You know, it is really difficult to say. I think that any travel, as soon as you leave the home, as soon as you exit your house at this point, it is considered travel. Now, the other issue that is, uh, that is, that is a problem in, or that is present in Japan, is that there is a severe lag between the reporting of cases, you know, when it is made public. So there's about a three-day lag. So when we see facts and figures, due to the bureaucracy uh, present in the country, we are being given figures that are actually from three days previous. So that is another, that is another uh, potential factor or, or difficulty, let's say, in, uh, in this whole affair. So then given that lag that you mentioned, could this potentially backfire then for the Japanese government? I believe so. I mean, it's always very important to closely monitor facts and figures. But again, I think that there, the Japanese government does have an economic, a clear economic interest in introducing the go-to travel campaign. Uh, it remains to be seen what will transpire. Uh, we will be keeping a close eye, however. Uh, the world is watching, given that uh, coronavirus cases are on the rise. Particularly, uh, this may be a cautionary tale for the U.S. The U.S. currently has 4.3 million cases and has uh, reported 150,000 deaths. So. Again, it's a very touchy subject, it's a very sensitive issue, uh, but it's one that we need to closely monitor and be aware of. Now we did see there was a lot of disappointment and cancellations when travel to and from Tokyo was excluded from the campaign at the last minute. So where else are people traveling within Japan? Well, what is happening as well is that Japan is, uh, the, gov the government of Japan is starting to introduce what they call workcation. And what that basically is, is an initiative that allows Japanese residents to leave urban areas like Tokyo and encourages them to go to more rural areas to stay for longer periods of time and to work from there. Um, however, once again, when we talk about the coronavirus and the spread of, of, of the coronavirus and coronavirus transmission, we have to understand that as soon as there is movement, as soon as people are leaving their homes, uh, there is a potential for that spread. And I want to talk about some of the confusion because on one hand, Japan has imposed an entry ban on 146 countries and regions, but at the same time, the government says it's looking at easing entry bans on a handful of countries in order to resume business travel. What's your take on this strategy? Again, what we're seeing is a clear economic interest. Government would love to revive economic activity, which has clearly been decreased due to the coronavirus pandemic. As someone who's based in the United States, I see that going on here, uh, clear as day. And so this is the balance that needs to be striked. How can we make sure that the country's economy does not fall? How do we ensure that uh, we can resume normal or as close to normal economic activity as possible while making sure that the health and safety of our citizens are not compromised. 
And just very quickly, if you had one piece of advice for people who do still want to travel domestically as safely as they can, what would that be? It is imperative to keep yourself informed and aware, to consult sources, numerous sources, incredible sources, to find out up-to-date information about transmission rates, not only where you're going, but where you are. I think that we have a moral responsibility as travelers to ensure that we are not carrying the virus with us. We can see, at least here in the U.S., that there are so many asymptomatic carriers. So even if you don't feel sick, even if, if you have not tested uh, yourself and you think that you are fine, you may be an asymptomatic carrier and you may be passing that along to someone else. So it's very imperative that you are aware of uh, these transmission rates and that you practice every precaution possible when you come into contact with people. Social distancing is key as well. Onika and wearing a mask, of course. Thank you so much. Onika Raymond there, the host of Travel Channel's Big City Little Budget and One Bag and You're Out.